All right. Um, so I came across an article by uh, Noah Smith. Noah Smith is a left of center uh, economist or, e or economic blogger. I don't even know if he's uh, how, how much of his uh, formal training is economics. I assume it is. I, I assume he's got formal training in economics. But he's an economics blogger. Uh, he's one of two um, center-left economic bloggers that I read. They have substacks. Him and Inglesis, Matt, Matt Inglesis, are the two that I read because I find them interesting. And uh, they are leftist up to a point. Uh, and when it comes to a lot of issues regarding, um, regarding um, economics, they're, they're actually quite good. Not all issues, some issues, but they're at least are thoughtful. And uh, they present arguments that we, those of us who, protect, who are on the pro-free market side, need to be able to address. Anyway, he had an article today. Uh, he titled it, uh, and I thought I'd do the show on this, Seven Reasons America is Headed for a More Conservative Decade. So I thought this would make your day. This would please you guys. You'd get excited. You'd get motivated for the future. Uh, because America is going to become a more conservative place. <laughs> anyway, why does he think this? And part of this is just analyzing voter patterns um, and, uh, and so on. Um, so uh, let's go through the seven and see whether we agree. And what this really means in terms of, uh, in terms of the country, what, what kind of conservatism are we talking about? What, where is this? And one of the things that Noah Smith says is, look, right now, the way Noah Smith sees conservatism, there is no conservative political party. There is nobody on the right who represents conservatism. He, he recognizes, to his credit, that Trump is not that. Whatever Trump is, he's not conservative. He's something. So when he says drift towards conservatism, he's not talking about drift towards Trumpism. He's talking about drifting towards kind of an old line, maybe even Reagan-like conservatism. So why does he think that's where we're heading? Well, first he says, just from an electoral perspective, so a voting perspective, the reality is that uh, you know, uh, minorities, non-whites in America, are now clearly drifting to, call it the right, to away from the Democratic Party towards the Republican Party. And this is happening, you know, significantly among uh, blacks and among Latinos. And I will suspect that it's happening among Jews right now, although there's no polling uh, yet to suggest that. There's no polling about it uh, yet, but uh, I think many people are suggesting it. Uh, if you look at graphs of how uh, Democratic Party, you know, polls with blacks, uh, you know, in the in the 2000s, basically well over 80 percent, well over 80 uh, percent, close to you know, in maybe in the mid 2000, 2005, maybe in the Bush election, close to 90 percent. Since then, it's been declining slowly. It went under 80% in the, in the, funnily enough, in the Obama years. Uh, and it is gone, it looks like it's going sharply under 80% today. Not quite, you know, it's not nowhere near 50%, nowhere near. It's still up there in the 70 plus percent. But it's a big difference, and it can make a big difference in swing states like Georgia. If you get fewer blacks voting Democratic, uh, you know, the Republican will win Georgia. Uh, many of them are becoming Republicans. Uh, and you can see, like, right now, over just over 20% of blacks claim to be affiliated with, identify as Republicans. That We've never seen that before, certainly not in the modern post-civil rights era have we seen so many blacks support the Republican Party. And the trajectory is upwards. The trajectory is that number increasing. With Latinos... Latinos have always been more split, at least since 2000 or since the 1980s, they've been more split. They've been bouncing around, but just about 50%. But it really does look like it's now under 50% of Latinos support the Democratic Party. 
That doesn't mean more Latinos support Republicans. That's not the case. There's still a bunch of independents in there. But the Republican Party affiliation with Latinos is up, um, and it's, it's approaching uh, 40%. Now, what is interesting here is a number of things. One is the fear, the panic almost, that many people have regarding the idea that immigrants will come here and vote Democratic and therefore permanently tilt the country towards Demo uh, the Democrats is just, it, 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 it is not true. It is not right. Right now, for example, if you believe the polls right now, Republicans, the Republican Senate candidate is, is winning in, in, in Nevada by a big margin. The only way that can happen is if uh, he is gaining a majority of the Latino vote in uh, Nevada. Um, the, Latin, the Latino vote is, I think, has always been inclined towards conservatism. Not towards free markets, but certainly towards the social agenda of conservatives, certainly towards religion, firstly towards the emphasis on family. The Latino vote has always been there. It's Republicans who have done everything in their power to alienate the Latinos, to alienate them, to distance them, to shun them, and to antagonize them, particularly in California, which has led to the Latino vote being so dominantly Republic Democratic. But that is shifting. That is shifting with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, second, third generation Latinos, uh, and it's shifting because their conservative nature is coming to the forefront. It is shifting because the, the ridiculous nature of the Democratic Party is becoming evident. It's shifting because the Democratic Party wants to call them Latinx, and they don't understand why, and they don't understand what the hell that means, and they reject this new terminology as absurd. They feel like the Democratic Party speaks down to them. Uh, and they, 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 you know, to the extent that Latinos tend to be more working class, the Democratic Party has moved away from the working class. Trump has rallied the working class to his, and they are much more likely to vote for, I think, Trump. So, um, uh, you know, Hispanic voters keep shifting uh, to Trump. They shifted a little bit in 2020. It looks like they're shifting even more now. Um, and, uh, and that will change the dynamics of, uh, of, who, uh, of who votes. Um, here's an, I mean, uh, uh, Noah Smith shows this interesting chart. He shows uh, non-white conservatives, people who self-identified as conservative, right? Uh, Asian, Latinos, and blacks but identified as conservative in the family and in the way they viewed the world, right? Most of them identify as Democrats or used to identify as Democrats, right? And yet today they are shifting away from the Democratic Party and shifting towards the Republican Party. And a significant number of Latinos, blacks, Asians, consider themselves conservative. And they don't want to have anything to do with the Democratic Party. And the more wacky the Democratic Party becomes, the less they want to be associated with it. So it does appear like there is momentum for the Republican Party to capture minority votes and, and to dominate the political landscape in the years to come. Uh, Ronald Reagan, way back in the 1980s, predicted, he, he predicted that the children and grandchildren of immigrants would shift uh, to becoming more conservative over time. Right. So, yeah, I mean, they mean by conservative, again, the, the social values, family, uh, anti-gay, anti-trans, and um, you know, I think, I think even to some extent physically, physically conservative in the, in, in the shallowest uh, sense, but also pro-religion. 
Latinos, uh, 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 anti-abortion. I think I think you probably get more anti-abortion among the Latinos than you do certainly among uh, you know uh, white women. But that I'm not sure. But certainly they they come to this country. Many of them are Catholic. So reason number one, a shift in minority voting. Reason number two, a real broad, what seems like a real broad dissatisfaction with DEI. Not just superficially, but I think this is real. And it's true that it might be that universities are just playing games. Now they're calling it IED instead of DEI. But for most Americans, it's not a game. Most Americans don't want this. And by the way, I include here these minorities who don't want special privilege, who don't want to be admitted to university not knowing whether they were admitted because they qualified or whether they were admitted because of the color of their skin. There is a real backlash across the board against DEI. And by the way, this is certainly in the courts. We saw with the Supreme Court, and that's going to hold in that sense. The, the, the courts are becoming a, a conservative. The, the Federalist Society has done a good job in packing the courts with these kind of judges. Uh, DEI is being, you know, uh, uh, toned down. Budgets are being cut. In some cases, scrapped completely. Uh, we talked about the fact that MIT no longer requires a mandatory DEI statement for faculty hires. Uh, you know, we, we, it, it, there's a return to um, standardized testing. A number of elite universities that scrapped standardized testing a few years ago are now announcing that they are reinstating standardized testing, SATs, um, MCATs, and others. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there, there is a greater emphasis on talent, skill, ability, and a move away from the absurdities and the the uh, over-the-top nature of DEI uh, businesses like Google are sending memos to employees about the need to run a business as a business, the need to make money, the need to be profitable, the need to be a business. The same is happening uh, with other uh, types of businesses. Uh, so there is a real DEI has hurt the left, and there's a real shift in America away from DEI. Um, there is a real, and we've talked about this on the show many times, the government just can't keep on spending the way it's spending. It just is impossible to happen. And it's, um, it's impossible to happen. There is a limit to how much you could spend. There's a limit to how much debt you can take on, in spite of the claims of the MMTs and others in the world. And this just cannot go on forever without a major recession, a borderline depression, or inflation. And something has to give. And, you know, so some kind of um, conservative balanced budget type talk is going to, not yet, at some point, because Trump certainly is not going to do this, at some point it's going to have to resonate because otherwise we're screwed. And maybe when we're screwed, that will resonate. I'm not sure what comes first. Right? So uh, whether that means taxes are going to go up or whether it means some spending cuts and even, even, right, even uh, uh, reform to um, uh, Social Security and Medicaid uh, is going to happen. So, you know, it's only fools, idiots, who try to predict a date for when this happens. But the trend is clear. You cannot keep accumulating debt the way, you're, the way this country is accumulating. And only an, a fool we we'll try to say, well, 200% of GDP, that's when it collapses. Luckily for you, I'm not a fool. Well, maybe that's why you're here. 
Uh, but it's no question it's going to happen. So the left doesn't have a solution to that. The left has nothing they can cut. They cannot cut the fence. They cannot cut their beloved entitlement programs. They can raise taxes, but they can't solve this problem by raising taxes alone. And they will lose elections if they raise taxes, and that's all they do. So the political map will swing to the right, will swing towards somebody who's willing to at least cap spending in one way or another. What else? The American people hate the idea of defund the police. I mean, it didn't last very long. One year, violent crime spiked, and everywhere, everywhere saw a massive increase in police spending. And it is the one thing that Americans across the board agree with, spend more on police. This is an issue that the far left has lost, lost completely, lost thoroughly, even in a place like Minneapolis, where you know, Rodney King actually died and where the protests started and everything and where they defunded the police, they completely refunded it and upped it. So, um, violent crime is coming down. And Violent crime is coming down because we have more police on the, on the streets. Violent crime is coming down because we have increased the number of police dramatically. Indeed, right now, the number of police in the United States is at an all-time high. There are more policemen out on the streets today than at any point in American history. And that has had results, as you'd expect it to have. Violent crime is down. Daniel, yes, I still owe you guys two movies, one of them sent of the woman. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm way behind on the music, the movies, all of that stuff. Way, way behind. Short story. Um, I, I <laughs> we will get to it. I promise. I promise I will do it. I don't, I'm not promising when because I keep failing on that promise, but I will do it. It's like, it's like the debt. There will be a debt crisis. Can't tell you when, but there will be one. The same with the movies. I will cover them. I have it. I have the list. I have it all down. I just don't know when. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, yeah. If the left associated with high levels of violent crime, if the left is associated with defund the police, the left cannot win. And I think the right is doing a good job associating with them. And it's why the shift is not just a temporary shift. That we have a shift towards more policing. We've seen that more policing works. Um, immigration. Basically, Americans don't like the immigration system that we have. And there is no compromise immigration system that allows for more immigration that can pass the Senate and the House. And the only thing that can be done is, uh, you know, some kind of uh, limiting immigration, which I think you could get probably bipartisan agreement to do because politically it's not tenable for the Democrats not to do so. As long as the immigration problem persists, Democrats lose. At least the, the presidency or those who perceived who can do something about it. The reality is that this asylum system is insane. It's crazy. Americans know it's insane and crazy. And they will vote against people who are trying to maintain it. And they're going to vote against Biden to a large extent because of immigration. And there's no question, this is the number one issue in polls that Americans are upset about. Um, and they will vote basically on this. Now, 
there's not a lot that can be done without passing a law and without, for example, the United States getting out of an agreement they signed in 1965, uh, an international agreement for asylum seekers. But fine, get out of it, right? Get out of it. Uh, I mean, it would be nice if they got out of the stupid asylum system and embraced fully the come-here-to-work system, which would allow millions and millions and millions of immigrants into the country. That would be fantastic. But that's not where they're going. I mean, politically, that's obviously not tenable, uh, and it's not going to happen. I don't think these changes, by the way, are all necessarily good. It's just the, this is the reality. I mean, the fact that Americans are upset about immigration, in my view, is unbelievably irrational. But it is what it is. And I agree with Americans that immigration based on asylum as the sole criteria or as the dominant criteria is insane. It's ridiculous. And it's anti-American interest. We should stop. We should put asylum seekers at zero. And we should put job seekers at however many want to come. All right. So he gives two others. One is um, we have a conservative Supreme Court. We're going to have a conservative Supreme Court for a long time. And um, that matters. It has a huge impact, both on behavior, but also just on attitude, on, um, on uh, the culture, on what is considered acceptable or not. Right. And finally, uh, there's no question, these Palestinian protests did not do well for, um, uh, these Palestinian pro protests did not do well for um, the left. While Americans are not necessarily pro-Israel, they're certainly not pro-Hamas, and they're certainly not pro-students occupying buildings, students rampaging through the streets, students blocking uh, or demonstrators blocking streets. They don't like these people, and 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 the fact that uh, the the protests have wrapped up the Palestinian cause with climate change, with racial justice, with abortion rights, with gender equality, with trans rights, with affordable housing, with anything. It's just one big blum glob of stuff. It's just made them more obnoxious and less sympathetic. So basically the left has created a, 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 a vacuum. Um, you have, uh, you have, um, uh, you know, you don't have a conservative movement to fill in that vacuum because there's no conservative movement today. What you have filling the vacuum is populism. And the question is whether this kind of Trumpist populism can sustain itself beyond Trump. How much of this is tied to Trump and how much is this is tried, tied to just a, a, a general uh, a disregard for America and, uh, and, and for any kind of ideas, principles, any kind of ideas and principles. That's hard to tell. Whether we see a conservative movement rising up is really hard to tell. Uh, Christianity, supposedly, we're told is in the decline. So it's not clear that religion is the unifying, would be a unifying factor for a new conservative movement. I think the decline of Christianity is overstated, and I, I think those trends will reverse themselves. We will see uh, that, again, that's a kind of a long-term trendy kind of thing that's hard to, hard to really estimate. But there's no question that since 2007, uh, since the mid-2000s, uh, religion, um, religion, people who consider themselves religious, Christian, that is on a downtrend, a dramatic downtrend. And whether that reverses or not, I think, to a large extent, will determine the nature of authoritarianism in America's future. I think better to say that conservatism is on the rise. I think that's a mistake that Noah is making. I think the right thing to say is that the package that constitutes the left today is in decline. The woke, DI, identitarianism, defund the police, burn down businesses, 
occupy campuses uh, and generally uh, the nihilistic view, that is in, that is in decline. And uh, what to replace it is, could be anything. Uh, suddenly it appears now that what's replacing it is Trump-style populism. Um, 